Abbey Road Studios Music Photography Award 2023 in the iconic Studio 3 with three of the judges for this year's awards. We have, um, to my left, we have Rankin, we have singer-songwriter Mae Muller, and we have photographer and last year's icon winner, mm. Eric Johnson. And we're talking about the judging of this year's pictures. And we're just going to start with talking about the standard this year and how, and how it was and how difficult you found to judge, really. Uh, uh, Shall I kick off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, w well, the first thing to say is that we had so many more entries. I think it was 10 times, was it 10 times more entries? Uh, yeah, so we had, the first thing to say is we had 10 times more entries, uh, which was so exciting because it meant that the, 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 the standard of the work was so high. And when we were coming to judge the last few uh, pieces, they were all really kind of worthy of winning last year's awards and it did mean that the ones that we actually you know have given given the awards to are extraordinary pictures uh, and it was also great because we had may and we had sophie and Spexler in the room and i i, I think just having the art artists ha in the room having two artists in the room gives you a different perspective because they're looking at the work in a, a much more emotional way, I think, in, in terms of how it makes them feel. And um, really, for me, one of the most exciting things about music photography is how collaborative it is with artists. So it makes more sense to have people in the room, but also that it, it does come from a, an emotional place. So even you know, looking at f photographs of any artist playing live or behind the scenes, the best, photographs or whether the photographer seems to have embedded or understands the artist and I feel that this year's uh, entries all had that part of them and there was a lot of debate about how much one did and one didn't and that was really exciting because it meant that we were we were all kind of sort of thinking that one or the other should win. So it was, it was, it was really rewarding and good fun as well. So again, as head judge, how do you, has the standard improved since last year? You were judging last year also, yeah? Yeah, I would say the standards really improved and there were a few uh, re-entries. So people were putting their, uh, th their work in and you could see that some of the photographers had got excited and, and put the work in again. But it was a lot of new work and I think that it was broader, there was more, um, there was different, we, we obviously we've got genres that we're, we're giving awards in, but there was more diversity within those genres as well. Okay. And so let's so go to the other end and work back this way, just to talk about this year's mm. awards. And what you, as a judge, what are you looking for in a picture? What makes a picture jump out from all the crowd? No, you know, it's like, I'm really like, I don't know, I'm really sure. It's like, I don't really have a plan. It's just already, a new outlet. It was very interesting to be a part of because I'd never judge anything, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's just kind of was just really nice looking at fun, cool photographs. I didn't know what to expect other than so with so many great photographs to look through. So it was just like, you know what I'm saying? It's like it wasn't really like, I, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not anything you have figured out in your head. It's just kind of like, oh, I lean toward this photo versus that photo. But it was so many good ones, you know? But is there anything that makes you stop at a particular picture and go, I love it? It varies, you know what I'm saying? One photo, you could like it because of this, the composition, the, the texture, or whatever. Another photo you could like because of the lighting. So it's not, I don't personally have a, a formula to liking anything either, you know? How about you, May? What sort of things do you think is important in a good picture? I mean, for me, because it's subjective, isn't it? So mm -hmm. I, I feel like, for me, it's more kind of like what Rankin was saying, it's more how it makes me feel, because I'm not a photographer, I don't have that kind of like technical um, like knowledge in a way, so I just see it and how it makes me feel, and I love to see like an emotion, especially in music photography and live photography, I love when a photographer captures, captures a moment, you know, where it's like the in-between moments, when they're like really in that note, or they're in mid-air, or they're just about to go on and you can feel their nerves or whatever, something that you don't really get to see. Because you can see the pretty pictures of people kind of like on stage and they're singing and they're... But I like those in-between moments. And as an artist, moments. Yeah. Okay. And as an artist, and say if someone's um, photographing me, like that's what I like, because there's a million pictures of me posing. But if I see a 
photograph of me that someone's taken that I'm like oh my gosh I didn't even I wasn't even aware right. you were taking that I was just so in that moment like that's what captures me so that's kind of what I look for in photos especially you know of other artists mm. um, and so Rankin what makes a picture stand out for you for me it's always a gut thing so it's an emotional reaction initially and then what I'm then looking for something that either makes me think something or leaves a trace, it, it leaves a memory. And there was a couple of pictures that did that. And I kind of still, you know, even a few days afterwards, I was thinking about them. And there's uh, one of them's um, of Little Uzi, and it's a, a, by a guy called Chris Ormead, I think. And that picture, we, we didn't really see that picture properly, properly until we saw it on screen, and you could really see the detail in it. And then we, we, were kind of, we kind of missed it, but then when we saw it properly in detail, it was like a bit of a kind of, you know, gives you a goosebumps moment. And, um, and there was also um, a Jay-Z Kanye picture that I hadn't seen before, but, but when I saw it, I was like, it was one of those pictures that made me think, I feel like I have seen that before. And um, that's another type of picture you go, well, there's something about that picture. And I think um, they said they were, the photographer said they were influenced by the um, Jeff Kennedy mm. pictures, you know, when he was president of, of the United States. And they'd taken them in a similar style. And I was like, yes, I knew I'd seen that style before. So those, those two pictures were the ones that I walked away and couldn't forget. They were kind of rolling around my head. And then probably 10 years, I'll remember them. So looking, obviously looked at a lot of pictures in this uh, competition. What do you think is a common mistake that people who want to enter these competitions or want to win these competitions make who basically don't make the grade? What are the sort of the common errors? Let's start with Eric, I guess. Oh, let's see, what's the common errors? I mean, you know, I think just like what you're saying, it's like I aspire to take the type of photos that you capture a moment. So I think that um, for anyone who don't really like, who's, who's not true to it in the, on that level, I think is doing himself a disservice. So the whole idea of trying to necessarily create something, um, especially I feel like in a world where things are so referenced, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I feel like, you know, the biggest mistake is not to really follow a vibe because like people tell me they want me to recreate photos that I've taken, for example. I'm like, but you know, that was Biggie, that was fake. Yeah. We were all young. We were in Brooklyn. Like yeah. Huffy was badass. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. that's why something like that would happen. So now my young people are like so referenced, like happy. I'm like, dude, you're not going to create something at that level if you don't really noticed your surroundings and mm. what's put in front of you all you guys together you know that's a really good answer mm. yeah i mean honestly like so often as a photographer you get asked either to reference yourself or even worse reference other people and it's the worst kind of commission you can get because i mean i don't know how the way i deal with it is i try and sidestep them <laughs> away from that and say well you can do that but you could also do this so that i'd say trying to copy someone else for an award that is a big no-no big time how about you mate is there certain kinds of pictures that return off for you um i don't know about turn off but i think i think it's just like finding that balance between because i do th believe that being completely original and uh, just having an, an, an original thought these days is almost kind of impossible because mm. you're inspired by so many different things True. so i think it's different it's like being inspired by say one thing but then making it your own because i feel like you can really really tell and i think it's just not being afraid to put yourself into your work and not trying to just recreate what someone else has done you can maybe be inspired but like always try and put your own spin on it and like how mm. you feel about it and what you want to get from it not just try oh that looks cool so i want to do what they did like always have your own idea of what you want to get out of it in a way but i guess that is easy said than done but if if you can like that's what i would say and having unique references as well so your references don't necessarily need yeah. to come from the genre right. they're from right. a million places right. you know like if you look at twigs or you know there's loads of people that take references artists i mean 
and they and they they take them from places you're like, where did they get that? Where the hell yeah, did they get that one from? But if you know about photography, you go, oh, that's so yeah. clever. So I, I always think it's that kind of unique. You can be original not by copying within the genre, but yeah. taking your references outside of it. Painters, mm-hmm. yes. books, yeah, yeah. you know, exhibitions. As as photographers, you you both have quite a distinctive, recognisable style that you've developed. And as as a young person starting out, or even not a young person, anyone starting out in this now, it's quite difficult to get to that point where to have a style and to create a style. And what advice would you give on anyone trying to establish that kind of identifiable look? I would say to maybe just to actually to try and create a photo that only that you can take. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know that now I hear people like, oh, we want you for this particular reason. And so I just feel like maybe if I was like a kid, I would say to the kid to like really, to, to really take advantage of your, uh, your surrounding and your friends. Because, uh, because potentially your friends are going to give you something that they would give no other photographer. So that gives you an angle there. So maybe if you start with that mentality, then that could be your hustle in the industry. You know what I'm saying? It could be like, you're the only person that can get everyone to do this or that or whatever it is. So I think that that's kind of like a way to kind of make yourself work in a crowded field. You know what I'm saying? If it's a photo that looks like, you know what I'm saying, you're the person that can get this out of it. And it, can, it varies, you know what I'm saying? Some, some people, it's a humor, amusement. Some people get people to be more sexual than others. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like that's something to really keep in the back of your head a little bit. What, what would make this photo, people be able to notice that that's your photo, you know? Do you have any other advice on the style? I think that, I mean, what Eric's saying is is so true. Like taking photographs is a great way to become a better photographer, and actually working with people you do have a relationship with does help you then understand how to build relationships. And uh, I would also say just studying photographers. Photography has been around for you know a couple of hundred years now, uh, almost, and it's 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 got a really great history and. There are people that have done some incredible things and in changing it and even just going from medium format to or large format to 35 mil and going to the phone and what the phone gives you. I think that having that knowledge, I'm always surprised when kids don't have that knowledge because I think that for you to really develop something that is unique and original to you, you have to understand how it's worked for other people. So a lot of people might compare me to David Bailey, but actually David Bailey's something that prods people as a photographer. I, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to sort of pull something out of them and it's a very different technique. Um, I think we're probably both quite confrontational in the, t- the way we use a lens, but you know, there's no way I'm not influenced by him and having to learn by looking at his pictures, but then my way of getting it is, is a very different way of getting it. Mm. Okay. Um, did you have any personal favourite photographs? Let's ask May first. What personal favourites from this year's competition that stand out for you? Uh, I, I mean, even before I was sort of we were judging the Caroline Polacek photograph by um, Aidan Zamiri. Aidan Zamiri. So yeah, I mean, I just think that photograph is so so good, so amazing. And I think whether you know a, a thing about photography, whether you know nothing about photography, whether you're an artist, whether you're, I just think that is a photograph that you just can't take your eyes off. Yeah, uh, Rankin, you mentioned Chris's picture. Um, yeah. Any others that are favourites? Um, I love the Northern Soul kind of mod picture only because I loved that scene. You know, when I was a kid, I was kind of attracted to it, but I think that all the pictures were had something. I mean, we did debate them, and there's a few that I wasn't as keen on, but um, the main thing was that there was a lot of passion in the room for people's favourites, uh, and I think that it's always good to go with those passions. Mm. Um, because I've been around a long time, I think that sometimes it's, it's better to, you know, if someone's really, really keen on something, kind of go, okay, well, if you're that keen, I'm not quite as keen on the person that I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm kind of pushing in this. And I, actually, the people I suggested didn't didn't get um, shortlisted. So 
I mean, the, what's the photographer's name that you that you suggested? Because I think that was your suggestion, wasn't it? Uh, Caroline. Yeah, Caroline. Aiden Samiri. Aiden Samiri. That picture, I hadn't seen that picture before. So when I saw it, I was intrigued by a lot of things about the picture. And like you said, what I loved about it was, A, I was, as a photographer, I was kind of trying to work out how the hell did they do did they that? Do that? <laughs> like, were they in the, in the carriage? Was it live? Were they just rolling with it? Was it, you know, gorilla style? Because gorilla is like super, super like difficult to, with an artist, Gorilla is really quite scary what to do. Um, it means going out without permission. Got you. Okay, yeah. yeah. So going out without er, Eric will know. It's like going out without permission. Like I once went out without permission on a, a U2 shoe in Nice, and they all just wanted to go with like one security guard, and I was like, "You guys are crazy. What? What are we doing?" They wanted to be photographed outside a casino for Q magazine. One one security guard, and I was like, "We're going to be mobbed." And within five minutes, we were mobbed. Mm. And I've got people like literally standing on top of me to get a Bono. Mm. So to me, taking an artist anywhere, yeah. it's dead exciting to do it. Like it's so exciting. So when you see that picture, you're like, how? Um, and then the other thing is you, later on, you're kind of going, again, that's another picture that stays with you because you're just going, it's, so, it's like a, it's almost like a kind of story within a story within a story. Um, so it, it makes you, th it's good yeah. you thinking, yeah. And it takes something so ordinary as like a tube carriage and it's sort of, it's so, so otherworldly yeah. and yeah. I love that and especially as a London girl, I love that. <laughs> Stand out pictures. Oh, so, oh, I can't tell you. There was a bunch of them. I like that, that photo where that kid was dancing. It looked like it was such a different era. So I love that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I love the Louise Burke um, picture mostly in silhouette. I didn't you know, like that. I wasn't keen on the Harry Styles one. You see, you, no, not the Harry Styles one, the one next to it. Yeah, yeah. that one I like. I like, I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I much preferred the Harry Styles one that didn't win. Do you remember that one? one yeah. No, no. The yeah. Ledge. But you know what? You, you were going, why is he on the... No, some, no, so Sophie was going, Sophie. I don't understand, why is he on the ledge? It makes no sense to me, and I was like, I'll just shut up. <laughs> there was another photo that I really loved too. I feel like it was on a bus or something in LA. And yeah, it was just yeah, yeah. And Was it Nipsey Hussle? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah. Oh my God, I love yeah, that That was yeah. a great... But that, 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 that didn't get short. Didn't make the, no, I love that yeah. one. I think what happened was it was taken at a different time. So some that's a, that's a good mm. thing for people at home. You know, do get your entry time slot right because it, we right. do fight for pictures, right. and sometimes they're out of the period they should have been taken in. Yeah, yeah because it's, and then I yeah. like that photo that's that's in the crowd. I always love when you look into a, yeah. a, a crowd photo and literally like every person is sharp. Something about that always excites me. So are you talking about the top shot one? I think yeah. it's yeah, that yeah. one, um, yeah. the third yeah. image. JPEG Mafia. So the Carlo Cavaluzzi picture. From the top, everyone, all of us, loved it immediately, well, didn't mm, they? Yeah. yeah, I love that photo. That actually brings me on to a, a question about live performances, because that's very difficult, I guess, to get something really different and iconic, and there's always loads of photographers in the pit, etc. So what's the secret of getting of great shots from that? You think from live music? Don't ask me. I'm terrible. I, I, I don't really shoot live you know, photography. I, mean, I used to. You know what I would say that when I'm, when I do look at things though, I do feel like it must be for a for a digital market because I, as someone who shoots film, I feel like without just throwing a flash and you lose everything. I don't get how people make it work, but you see some people that like have so many beautiful live photos. So yeah. I wouldn't necessarily know myself, but something. Calls me, but then you know there was old school before digital. There were great live photos too. That was film, so I don't even know. You know, I think it's you hard think to about find. It. I think it is hard to find. Like as an artist, I've not struggled, but like it, it is. It's not like to find a photographer that is great at live photos. Like it is such a mm. such a skill. But when you do, and I, I think it is just about like capturing like the joy. I feel like when you see artists. I, like photographs of artists on stage, I just love when you can just see the joy of it, no matter what kind of genre they are or what kind of artist they are. That's kind of what I want, what I want to see. But 
couldn't tell you what the secret is. I just mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard to do. I used to shoot it when I first came to London. I used to shoot the Marquee Club for free just to try and get myself, you know, connected with people. And it's a really tough gig. Like you've got to be really, really good at understanding what the artist a lot of the time you've got to go and see the artist before mm. so you you know where they're going to be what the light's going to be like at that moment yeah there was a really great picture um who was there? there was one that we loved wasn't it and it got chucked out of iggy pop mm. yeah. you know which was a shot of him from behind you know lo looking out at the crowd and it was and it was and he was kind of hugging himself i think it got chucked out maybe for time but that picture you know that that photographer has been there before and is like ch checking it out and working out the light and that's really the, the only way to do it if you want to be a professional at that type of photography you've got to really know your stuff i couldn't do it it's like weddings i can't do weddings <laughs> weddings and gigs yeah um, when you're photographing subjects that have been photographed multiple times before, that must be in a way quite, uh, I don't know, is it a difficult thing when, you, when you're thinking, how do I photograph this person in a way that they haven't, it doesn't, you know, it's new, basically? I, I mean, I, that's a really good question. Do you want to? I mean, I feel like I like to try and get photos of people that have been photographed a lot of times in a really natural state, usually. I feel like that's one of the things you rarely see. When I shot Doja Cat, for example, I thought that by the time she was blowing up, it was also that photos that captured some, because all the younger rappers, the girl rappers would tell me afterwards how much they loved that, that photo, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. how that broke the internet. So their version was, amongst all those girl female rappers, they were like, oh, they'd never seen someone at their level photograph quite so honestly or something would be kind of like the equivalent of the way Madonna would be photographed back in the day day so mm -hmm. I feel like for kids without giving a secret that basically if you can capture something that's a bit genuine no one else is pushing that yeah. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to aspiring music photographers? Um, Don't start with rank. Yeah, sorry. Uh, get, get to know your genre. Um, I think one of the most important things is to go back and look at the history of music photography. You know, um, I, if, I, if I was to give people advice specifically, I'd say start at Elvis and work your way up, you know, to, to present day because Elvis's aesthetic really changed everything. Um, very derivative aesthetic, but it it became, you know, something that everybody started to copy. So I think that if you know that, and then it goes to kind of working with each individual artist. So for me, when I, if I was to photograph May, I'd look at all of the other photographs of her that had been taken, and then I would try and do something different because that would be me wanting to put my aesthetic and visual identity onto what she's doing. And then, and then it would be about us working together. Like I collaborate with my subjects, I don't steal anything from them. So that's how I would approach it. But I think everybody else has got to find their own way. Like, I guess as a subject, you appreciate that when the photographer's done yeah. the research. And sort of yes, I think it's, it's, it's funny. It's really similar to like, almost say when I go into the studio and I'm gonna write a song, with someone maybe new, uh, you can really tell the difference when when you know you go in there and you can tell someone's done their research and they're not just saying ideas and you go, I would never say that. Like what you've obviously not. So I guess it's the same when you're working with someone at a shoot or with a photographer. It's nice to know that you know some you know you they've done their research and you can then that's when it becomes like a collaboration because it's like oh yeah like I like that idea maybe we could do something more like this and mm. um, that makes it just more fun and that's how you just get a better a better result i i feel like you know mm. music's definitely the most collaborative of all the, the portrait genres because you're always working with somebody that has a really strong identity and idea of their identity yeah i guess because if you're just and you can you know if you're just like photographing a model for a brand it's sort of like 
you're just doing like the brand has an idea that you stick to that like it's kind of what they want but with an artist it's like it's about it's you put it's all about it's your identity you know mm -hmm. and you have as much say as how you want to be portrayed you know so that's why it can that's why it's so great when it's collaborative because it's not just mm. oh it's just for a brand or it's like a model so we're just going to do it's just like a job and it's very xyz it's like mm. oh no let's work together and musicians have fought for those in you know that identity they fought for it a lot of time they've mm. you know done gone, gone through the ringer yeah. to to get that that power to be yeah. collaborative so it's respecting that and if someone's giving you their face and time you just it's to me it's immediately something you should respect so mm. but with music musicians or entertainers not so much actors weirdly like but people that are on stage and they're making what they're performing it's very very important mm. Eric, is there a different aesthetic that's coming from as a, coming from, from America from the US photographer? Is there a different aesthetic there? Do you think or different styles? I don't know. I mean, I think that maybe maybe social media have made things bridge together a lot more than it, it would have in a sense. But that said, just as a as a curious person, I find more than just what's popular. And um, so that being the case, I feel like there's always. All of it's going on. There's mm. people who are like purists. When I was coming up, that would be like the like you know like would be like the equipment I group of like Erica and the Angela Maxwell and Lauren Hill. All those group would be in one group. But then there would be more commercial artists that we really loved as well that were more like. So I feel like you know it's kind of like it's kind of just in your best interest to be a a curious person and an open-minded person because you're going to meet so many different types of people yeah. and some people are going to i find personally i like as well when you meet someone as badass they can the plan you have a plan too but then sometimes people don't and then that's cool too like you know what i'm saying like as as a curious person sometimes just the awkwardness of having a few minutes because i always feel like it's so intimate like you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. that's the only thing that you could do where people are like you could literally do it with someone different every single day mm -hmm. and anyone that you're even remotely curious about like that's your exchange so that's why i feel like it's something so promiscuous about it and it's like <laughs> really like everybody is so different that you have so many different exchanges and sometimes mm -hmm. you, you you're trying to get around each other Mm -hmm. And that's interesting to you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's how it is in life, you know what I'm saying? So I would say to you, if you pay attention to your surrounding in life, a lot of answers, that's what I think too, like, a lot of answers are there without kids paying attention to the details. But it's not just also ripping out people's photos, but I feel like documentaries and things that tell me anything about how anyone made it, there's going to be details about that to be like what you can contribute to someone making it to that level. So like when you were saying like the Elvis photos or whatever, blah, blah, you look at those the documentaries like that, and it's like, okay, you look at the whole thing, but it's like, oh, wait a minute, who's that person that took those photos? Because that photo, those pers that person got a ride with the Elvis studio. studio so if you pay attention to yeah. your life, I feel like a lot of answers are right there like yeah. all the time and that's you know your what I'm job saying? isn't you know what it I'm that, that that's our job it's like to show the world how we see the world so right. if you I don't, you can't be a photographer if you're not inquisitive mm. if you're not if you're naturally not somebody that's asking questions mm. to forget it don't don't even pick up a camera it's and everyone does it differently like we'll we definitely approach things in a completely different way but if you're not present in the room with the person you're photographing you're not taking a good picture of them there's no question and it doesn't matter if it's documentary or if it's you know a really posed shot for an album cover you've got to be in that moment with that person it's really intimate and um, weirdly intimate and i'm sure you've experienced yeah. it it's kind of weird you kind of feel mm. like you're almost kind of making something together it's very it's very it's very strange and it gets dead exciting um, and some people are like, you know, if you felt like Madonna, she's like so cold with you. <laughs> but then, then the magic, you know, sometimes you turn the camera and suddenly they're like, bing, and they're there. And you're, you can't, you almost kind of feel they're looking at you. They're not looking at you. That's the other thing, isn't it? <laughs> not really, people aren't really looking at you for in camera. They're looking at the audience. <laughs> so you're the conduit, you're the vessel, but you've got to be there in the moment with them 
to give them that, to empower them to do that. And even when it's a documentary picture of somebody on stage, that person's feeling it and they want to show how they felt about that person and show it to everyone else. So it's kind of basic, isn't it? It's like, mm. it's, really, it's really interesting. I think just to close, because I think we've probably went over time, I imagine, but um, do you have a, is there a memorable, uh, you mentioned Madonna, and is there, is there a memorable person that you photographed from a memorable moment in a photo shoot you want to recount, which would be something that's the same with you? And the Rolling Stones for me, like, the Rolling Stones are like, I always, whenever I shoot a cool, like a young band that are trying to be cool and like a bit cold, I'm like, the Rolling Stones were much younger than you in how much they wanted to be in the room and be like collaborative and it was it, it was extraordinary and Bowie as well was you know I thought Bowie was going to be like uber offish and cold and his pictures looked so distant intentionally and then it was you know into the room came Tigger from Winnie the Pooh like bouncy 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 yeah. and I went wow I'm never going to presume anything about anyone ever again that you know what they're like and so they were they were mine. How about you, Eric? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like, for, as a curious person, I feel like I have a story about every single photo she shoot. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that. It's something cheeky about all of them. Um, I mean, clearly, like the obvious ones. I mean, I feel like, I feel like for Lauren Hill, for example, for her to be kind of like she's like an enigma in a way. People don't really like know what's her real deal. I just know that it was really like a curious exchange to work with someone at that level that was very detailed about like or the aesthetic like do you already have the name miseducations you know what I'm saying so it's like that already and it's like but she had like color palettes and I was like wow like you know what I'm saying it's like she had showed me photos that she liked the way that the film was processed in someone else's photos you know what I'm saying so I feel like that kind of like, and it was cool for me because I'm like, and you know, I'm a kid too at that point. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm team player, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's just a, a story to put out there based on the fact that we have so many different stories about her, but my story was like, you know, then I ran into her afterwards and then security was like, she was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna no, get up here. Like, this is like, so that's just the person I know as Miss Lauren Hill that I feel like people don't share that much. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but she was very like, you know, I thought she was very next level. We would never know that you're gonna, that she would create something that much of a masterpiece, mm. you know what I'm saying? But still, you know, we're hanging out at our house having dinners, like she's playing music and things like that. And it's like the person that went into creating that was sort of, was someone really endearing and totally creative, you know? So I, I'm appreciative about that. But you know, Vicky Faith was cool, Aaliyah, we had a moment. So you could just go through all the, De La Soul, we went to, we went to Great Adventures. We also stopped it and I said it was fun. So um, Jay Dilla, I didn't know him until after I photographed him. Glad I found out later because he's so badass, but it was so early in his career that I never heard of him. I just know that Q-Tip and um, Ali was pushing him to the front of the photo. And I was like, he's pretty yellow famous one. So there's stories for everything, you know? How about you, mate? You, obviously, as, a, as an artist, you look at other photographs and think, wow, I want to work with that photographer. Is, is there any sort of... Yes. Like I actually saw... Um, I want to make sure I get their name right, John Yuyi, which is John Y-U-Y-I, I'm pretty sure, and they just shot Olivia Rodrigo for the cover of Rolling, Rolling Stone, and I'd never like heard of them before, and I saw that cover and I was like, oh my god, that's amazing, and I think they did all the creative direction, and so I went and I did like a deep dive on their Instagram, and I just thought, I, I, just, I just love, it was just so like eye-catching to me, and it was fun and playful, but like slick but amazing and so that was like oh I'd love to work with somebody like that one day that can take something which because a lot of their work looks like it's shot in like a studio mm -hmm. but they make so much of it and there's real concepts it's not just like an artist in front of a backdrop and that's that it's it's really it like it's like their work really tells a story which I, I really really like 
Um, so that would, you know, I'd love to work with them one day. But I think for me, I'm, I'm still sort of learning myself and I'm still kind of each shoot that I do as an artist is different and I'm still learning about what what I want to get what I want to get from from a photographer and also learning you know we say when you're doing like an editorial of a like a and like a cover it's going to be different to say my album cover you know so it's mm. it's like learning which kind of what what you want to get from each each photo you know mm. Just one final thing, you mentioned album covers, as you're on our panel on Amateur Photographer for the great album am, covers yeah. and the Steve Fairclough does for us. How important is album cover art nowadays, do you think? I mean, I think for me, I still think it's so important and, you know, I understand that it's not so much about like the physical copies anymore, which is still a shame, but it's still like it's the cover of your mm -hmm. art. Do you know what I mean? Like that is, that is your mm -hmm. name on the tin. Like you want it to, and some people don't, some people are not as visual as others, Some, but like you want it to represent you and say if it is an album, like that is the visual you want to go with all of these songs. I just see like for my album, I've got 17 songs on there that I've put my blood, sweat and tears into. So like, I want the cover art mm -hmm. to like match that energy, you know, I want it to be just as good. Um, and, you know, people still love like physical, like vinyl, like CD, but it's way more of like a fan orientated thing, you know, mm -hmm. like no one's really buying physicals or vinyls unless they're like a proper fan of the artist or they're just like, a vinyl collector or but I still think like that's still a reason to do it you know just for the fans that love it and for people that do still really really appreciate it so I still think you know I hate the idea that that is kind of like a dying out thing that people don't really care about as much I think you know like music and photography and all the visuals like it goes hand in hand it really mm -hmm. really does so I think we should be putting just as much effort and time and love into it even if it is you know more like digi digitally like consumed now I still feel like it's people are still looking at it do you know what I mean mm. it's still it's still your your art and your work so I feel like it, we should still be putting just as much effort and you know time and like love into it I think and that's like I get so much joy from it why why would you not want to do that, you know? It's, mm. it's fun. <laughs> do you, is that how I have to to that, um, I mean, I would hope that it means something else. It doesn't seem like it means <laughs> as much as it used to, but, um, you know, I'm pretty, like, romantic in some areas of things. So I'm like, hey, listen, maybe the way that the internet is came and made everything small, maybe in the future there's going to be something that makes everything big again. So, like, let's think about it that way in regards to, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of important albums, for example, like Marvin Dicke, here's here my dear. It's like there are albums that are more important later in life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, it may not be this little square on the phone right now. But if you think about evolution and how the world, so let's create something that like when it's time to put up iconic things from 10 years ago, if there's a platform, even if it's digitally, that makes them all big, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's wow, a yeah. reason to maybe keep in mind that this is just an era. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's I, I think that's the best songs I've ever heard on that. Like, I've never thought of it like that. I just know music and photography go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no visual imagery and, and, and music are, are totally intertwined, especially photography. So I think that's a brilliant way of looking at it. Okay, well thanks for watching. Uh, do check out the winning pictures, they're absolutely fantastic. And do subscribe to the channel and comment below uh, what we think of the pictures this year. Thanks very much.